So we know what's coming up, right? In January, we got the Royal Rumble coming up. So, I decided I thought it was a good idea to watch every single Royal Rumble event in history. Boy, was that a bad idea. Because we I started off with the 1988 Royal Rumble. I'm not just watching the Rumble match. I'm watching the whole show. Because I didn't complete my goal last year, now I gotta punish my goal, punish me with a bigger goal, which is watch every show of the Royal Rumble. I mean, I gotta watch the whole show through. I can't just skip to the Rumble match. By the way, um, good God, um, so let's get started real quick with the first match on the card, right? What you thought, this show is the first Rumble show, right? And boy, did it miss hard. Like, I think back then it probably was a hit, but to nowadays standards, God, this show sucks. The Rumble was fine, but this show sucks. Let's start with the first match, which was what you think would be a good match. Ricky Steamboat versus Rick Rude. Two big names in WCW, but they didn't have their big WCW runs yet. So you thought this would be a good contest between these two. But, oh boy, was I wrong. Because I'm giving this match one and three quarter stars. And I'm going to tell you why. The match was... Stupid. <laughs> it was so dumb. And here's why it was dumb because you have the rum you got these two workhorses, right? It they it was pretty good action, but the rat the whole way the match was planned out was weird and stupid. Here's how it was weird and stupid. Steamboat and Rude were wrestling in the middle of the match, right? Steamboat taps out at some point. The ref doesn't call for the bell. The ref sees Steamboat tapping and just ignores it and lets the match roll on. And then he does it again! <laughs> and again! And then Steamboat passes out from a hold. Ref raises his arm. One. Two. Steamboat hands, hand goes down for three and ref goes and picks it up to try and do a fourth. That's when Steamboat catches it. And Steve would tap out again! What was this match? Good God! The ref, I felt like, wasn't doing his fucking job. Good God. And then... There's a spot where, there's a ref bump. Where Rick Rude pulls the ref and Steamboat jumps on, on him for a crossbody. The ref falls back weirdly. And then... Rick Rude has him like a backbreaker torture rack, and then the ref calls to the bell. Rick Rude's theme plays, and then the ref says, Oh no, this match is a DQ win for Steamboat. Rick Rude's trying to celebrate his win, and Steamboat was handed the win by a DQ because Rick Rude pulled the ref. Now, if this was like a five minute match, a DQ would have been five. A uh, fine. Not if the match was 17 minutes! 17 minute match ends in a DQ which in my opinion Rick Rude won like minutes ago when Seamboat tapped the first time and it wasn't like he was doom 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 he was clearly tapping I don't care if he's trying to hold up that's a tap if one hand just slapping the mat repeatedly that's a tap it's not like he was hulking up like and like trying to get to the rope or anything. He was tapping, clearly. That was a tap. God, this ref didn't do his job. Or at least wasn't even good at it. Oh, boy. So that was a rough start to the show. And then we get to Dino Bravo randomly bench pressing. How many pounds was it? 
715 pounds. Which is mitter with controversy because it looked like Jesse Ventura helped him. Which, that's what it looked like. Oh, God. That segment, the bench press segment, went on far too long. I felt like that segment was like 10 minutes, and it didn't need to be. Like, if you were going to have a bench press segment, you get three minutes max. Three. Because it felt like it went on forever. That's what it felt like. Good God. This event, man. It was something. And then, you know what? This part is nice. This part is nice. Because after this, we had a women's tag match for the WWF women's tag titles. It was two out of three falls because WWF was all aboard the two out of three falls train at this time. It was two out of three falls between the Jumping Bomb Angels and the champions, the Glamour Girls. And it's fun seeing women actually wrestle 15 minutes in 1988. This is before the Divas era, but they were called ladies then. And um, the Jumping Bomb Angels with the win, it was a n neat match. I give it 2.75 because... Hey, it was better than Steamboat and Rick Rude had what Steamboat and Rick Rude had earlier. Um, because here's the thing with that Rick Rude Steamboat match: had it been in WCW, I'm pretty sure. Because I think this was before their big W their big WCW runs. It would have been a great match. But Vince, being Vince, decided pull shit like that. But the Jumping Bomb Angels with the win, becoming the new women's WWF Women's Tag Champions. And yes, they had women's tag titles before. Um, it was a nice match. I'm not going to question it. It was pretty good. It was decent. It was decent. That's all I'm going to say. And then we had Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan doing a contract signing for their rematch from Mania 3. A rematch. And... Oh, by the way, Vince McMahon and um, uh, it was Jesse Ventura were on commentary this whole show. And then um, you got you got Hogan and Andre doing their contract signing. And at this point, DiBiase was trying, Ted DiBiase, Million Dollar Man, was trying to buy the WF title. So DiBiase was in the corner of Andre through this signing. The segment ends when Hogan tries to swing at DiBiase and Andre just throws the table at him. At Hogan. That's how that segment ended. And then we got to the Rumble. By the way, this was a four-match card and a random tag match main event. Not the Rumble. Because Vince didn't know how this match would go. I'd give it 3.25 stars. But not a whole lot happened in this Rumble, really. So, you know what? I'll give it 2.75. Nah, I'll give it just the three. The three stars, that's it. It's all you're getting. First ever Royal Rumble. Because it it was like a nothing match. It was... I mean, you had some good moments. Bret Hart and Tito Santana started it. Um, But Tito Santana... Wasn't treated that well in this Rumble. He was the second person out. Bret Hart was the Iron Man in the Ru Iron Man competitor in the Rumble. If you don't know what the Iron Man competitor is, that's the person who lasts the longest in the Rumble. He was the Iron Man competitor in here, and he went 25 minutes before being eliminated eighth by um who eliminated him? Don Morocco. He came in 13th place. Uh, the Warrior, the Ultimate Warrior, entered 18, but was eliminated. Quite er without eliminating a single person. This was before Ultimate Warrior's big push. Then you got a lot of Sam Houston, Jake Roberts, uh, Harley Race, who didn't do a whole lot. Um, One Man Gang was a wrecking crew in the match. 
and he came runner up to Jim Duggan. Who I've met Jim Duggan. He was a very nice man when I met him back in 2015. Like he was a very nice man. Very kind. Oh, I also Jake Roberts was also in the Rumble and I also met him at that same show. Also a very nice man. And um yeah, this was like a the closing spot is what people remember when one man gang's running at Duggan, Duggan pulls the rope down. That's the only thing I think people remember from the Rumble is that closing spot. Other than that, the Rumble's mostly forgettable. But it wasn't like it's not the worst Rumble in history. I think we'll get to that later on. Oh god, we're gonna get to those later on. And yeah. That was that Rumble match. And then we get to the next segment, which was a Hulk Hogan interview. Yes. <laughs> Recovering from getting a table thrown at you is apparently so easy. Yeah, he um, he would come out, cut, cut a promo on Andre and Ted, and just go like, yeah, I don't sell out. That's basically Hogan's thing is that, that Ted's trying to, of course, buy the belt. Hogan's saying that he won't sell out. And then we get to the main event, which was another two out of three falls tag match between the Islanders and the Young Stallions. No, no title was on the line. It was just a random ass match that went 14 minutes. <laughs> yeah, um, it was... Uh, how much did I give it? 2.25 stars? Yeah, that sounds fair. Because... Halfway through the match, to end the first fall, it was ended. The first fall ended by a countout because um, Paul Roma got thrown over the top and landed wrong on his knee. So the first fall ended by a countout, and to stall for time, they brought the the young stallions to the back to see, check on Roma, and then DiBiase and Andre go out on the interview stage to do an interview. <laughs> so middle of the match, <laughs> we get a Ted DiBiase Andre interview. Ain't that something? Well, Haku and Tom are just in the ring, just waiting to see if Paul Roma and the Stallions can continue. Which they do. Paul Roma comes back out with, um, who was his partner's name? Jim Powers. Comes out with him, and then after that, the Islanders just beat them. Two falls to none. By the way, the women's tag match was two to one. One fall got given to the Glamour Girls and the Jumpin' Bomb Angels got two points. Jumpin' Bomb Angels were the women's tag champs at the end of the night. And then the Islanders, though winning the main event of the first Royal Rumble pay-per-view, won nothing in doing that. <laughs> nothing was on the line. Neither team were tag champs. It was just a random-ass match. And then afterwards, uh, Vince and um, Jesse Ventura talked about what happened during the night. And then that was the end of the show. The first Royal Rumble event, ladies and gentlemen, does not hold up <laughs> to nowadays standards. Holy shit. Um, and now i got to grade the whole show as a whole. Though it's the first Rumble pay-per-view. We got the first ever Royal Rumble match, which was only 20 men, because they didn't want to do 30. They didn't do 30 till like, the year later. The next year. And then, um... This would become a yearly tradition. So, the fact that the Royal Rumble is still going on... You gotta give ups to that. The match quality is... Mm, goes from bad to average, really. It's just average match quality. Like, the opener was a stinker, and then the rest of the card was like, okay. Oh, the rumble was good. Okay, again. That's what, that was the rest of the card. And then you got interviews going on. Hogan didn't even compete at the event. Because they didn't know if this was going to be a major show to back off on. And then you got... What else? The first Rumble match was all right. It was good. It was decent. It was good. And um, Jim Duggan being crowned the first Rumble winner, he won nothing out of winning it. Besides being 
put in his, the history of Bricks as the first ever Royal Rumble winner. All the other 20 competitors can claim to being in the first ever Royal Rumble. While Jim Duggan can be claim to being in the first ever Royal Rumble and being the first ever winner of it. And One Man Gang can claim to be the first ever runner-up. <laughs> um, and then you got... The weird-ass main event, Paul Roma getting hurt. And then... Yeah. The, the bench press segment went on far too long. And... I'm probably going to give this ma this show an overall of 40% out of 100. Because this show is... It, Vince didn't want, know what to do with the Royal Rumble. Because this was Pat Patterson's idea. you got to remember that. This was not Vince's idea. This was Pat Patterson. The Rumble match, the concept was Pat Patterson's idea. And then... Vince just decided to go, you know what, fuck it, let's do it. I don't know what else to do. This show, it wasn't the best. Far from it. But it's, pro but it's probably not also going to be the worst. I mean, come on. Anyway. That was my review of the 1988 Royal Rumble. I will try to review every Royal Rumble pay-per-view, including pre-shows, starting today, and we're going to work our way all the way up until I'm going to also review the 2023 Rumble, because I can. Anyway, see you guys next time.